Tonight we're going to talk to the chairman, Gordon German, chairman of the committee, to arrange the celebration of this anniversary. And Gordon, what are your plans to take part in this celebration? Well, Ken, we're going to have a, a banquet this evening uh, for our members and uh, visiting uh, Chamber of Commerce people. Uh, we have a visitor from the Canadian Chamber of Commerce, Director, Mr. G.F. Dunn, who will present a gavel um, commemorating the 60th consecutive meeting of the Chamber. How many members do you have in the group? We have about 30. They don't all attend meetings, but uh, we have them there occasionally. Well, Gordon, I understand that uh, for your meeting tonight, you have gone to a lot of work and a lot of preparation to delve into the early history of Roston, the early formation of the Chamber of Commerce. I wonder if you could give us a little of that on our program tonight. Yes, Ken, certainly. Uh, when the uh, Chamber was first formed, it was known as the Board of Trade. And uh, during the fall of 1896, a few of the merchants got together and uh, started talking about a board of trade. In November, they circulated a petition, and they hoped to get uh, approximately 100 signatures. Uh, the petition was finally completed early in December and was sent off to Ottawa, where it was received uh, about December the 21st by the Secretary of State. Uh, he wrote back uh, in closing the charter, and that came back to Rossman on uh, January the 6th, 1897. It wasn't until early in February, however, until the council got around to uh, calling meetings and election of officers. Uh, and uh, uh, adoption of bylaws. Mr. J.F. McLaughlin was the first president, and uh, Dave Bogle, a vice president. It's rather interesting to note that uh, Dave Bogle was the first editor of the Ross and Minor here. And uh, Mr. W.S. Weeks was appointed acting secretary. At that time, they thought that they would um, have a permanent paid secretary. Uh, unfortunately, some of the records of the uh, association have been lost, and we haven't very much to go by. But apparently the executive did run into trouble because the Rossman Miner in May of 97, the editor, he took the uh, officials to task. Uh, the president and the secretary and the vice president apparently were all away. Uh, I know that uh, Mr. Bogle around that time was in London trying to sell a few gold mines, uh, but uh, he said that he felt that the uh, uh, chamber should be getting busy, that there was this uh, threatened uh, alien act in which they were going to uh, ban any aliens from working in Canada, which of course would affect uh, United States citizens. Uh, here in Rossland, uh, well, there had quite a number of them at that time, and um, that nothing had been done uh, by the Board of Dra Trade uh, about the newly incorporated city of Rossland. Uh, the bylaws were being discussed, and they were of uh, vital uh, effect to the, uh, the merchants, and uh, the ch Chamber should, uh, the Board of Trade should do something about it and that uh, not a step had been taken to uh, further the erection of a smelter here in Rossland by the big Leroy company. Uh, and as a matter of fact, the Leroy had indicated that they were going to build a smelter in Northport. And of course, uh, that wasn't, didn't go over very well with the merchants in Rossland. One of the first uh, projects, the uh, Board of Trade took on here was the uh, reformation of the stock exchange in Rossland. That was shortly, or very short lived, but uh, very interesting at that time. Uh, then in July, 
Again, the editor of the Rawson Miner went after the executive, and he said that just because the president and vice president and secretary were away, it was not necessary for the Board of Trade to uh, cease operation altogether, and that he thought that the council ought to meet and uh, elect new officers, uh, which they did, but uh, the meeting had no sooner convened when some person questioned whether it was uh, illegal or not, as uh, there wasn't enough of the council there to form a quorum. So you can see that we uh, did have troubles in the uh, old days there, and uh, the feeling ran high here in Rosslyn as to uh, export of ore, uh, whether they should put a, a tax on it, and the formation of a smelter, and it finally resolved uh, down to uh, they had a meeting in August, and it was called as a general meeting, uh, at which uh, a resolution was passed and uh, to the effect that the, the population of Rosslyn viewed with alarm the agitation for the imposition of a duty on ores, which are alone produced in the Rosslyn camp. Uh, it transpired at the meeting that uh, what Rosslyn really needed was a smelter here or a cheap transportation and not a duty on ores. Uh, in 1901, the Rossland Board of Trade was instrumental in forming the Associated Board of Trade of Eastern British Columbia. And uh, Rossland man, Mr. J.S.C. Fraser, was the first president. And uh, the first annual meeting of this associated board was held here in Rosslyn in 1901. And over the years, Rosslyn has played host to the associated board in 1906, 1914, 1928, 1937, and again in 1949. Well, that certainly is a very complete uh, thumbnail sketch of the early history of the work of the board and some of the early highlights of Rossville at that time, Gordon. I wonder if you could tell us now some of the other projects that uh, were undertaken or accomplished by the board from that time on. Well, I have a few here from 1912 to 1938. Uh, in, in January of 1912, they were discussing the Canadian National Highway from the Atlantic to the Pacific. And of course, uh, each year the Rosslyn and uh, Rosslyn Trail Wagon Road was a uh, item until, uh, I guess, uh, cars became uh, in general use. But then uh, again in 1912, the uh, bridge across the Columbia River a Trail was also under discussion. And uh, they also wanted a survey of the Columbia River to see whether it was feasible to uh, keep it open from, uh, for navigation from the boundary right through to uh, Revelstoke. Uh, 1913, I see they had a, uh, a discussion on uh, telephones. They were after the BC telephone to establish uh, all their lines along trunk roads and to uh, place uh, telephone booths every five miles to unsettle uh, uh, territory so the traveling public could uh, be protected. And um, the uh, BC telephone also came in for some uh, talk again in 1917. Uh, they wanted them to do away with the present uh, long distance toll lines between uh, Rossland and uh, Trail and uh, put in a central exchange. And uh, then in 1917, while the rumor was getting around that the Great Northern Railway wanted to abandon their uh, Red Mountain line, and of course uh, that caused a lot of uh, talk. And uh, in 1918, uh, uh, the strike at the Trail Smelter meetings and the telegrams and resolutions and so on. Um, 
in 1918, the uh, uh, Rossland Board of Trade affiliated with the Associated Boards of Trade of Eastern British Columbia and um, and British Columbia and the Board of Trade of British Columbia as well. And uh, there was resolutions there about the uh, Duke of Orders in 1919 that they should be compelled uh, to obey the laws in regard to registration of births, deaths, and marriages. And uh, they wanted a, a road in back in those days to Sheep Lake uh, to open up all that territory and uh, eventually connect with uh, Paulson. And uh, then in 1920, they had decided that they, it should be a wagon road between Rossland and Cascade. And sometimes I think, Ken, that that's just what they got, was a wagon road. Uh, in uh, 1922 and 23, the um, uh, Canadian, uh, the Great Northern Railway finally did cease operation here. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Uh, here's an interesting item. In 1922, it says that a Mr. Guire, government engineer, drove his McLaughlin motor car 41 miles over the Cascade section of the Transprovincial Highway. And I imagine that would be what the first automobile that ever did go over that. Um, in 1924, they wanted the uh, Transprovincial Highway between Ross and the Cascade surfaced. And uh, then there was efforts to keep the uh, Ross on the Northport road, uh, road open all winter. And, uh, uh, oh, they went after the city in 1927 because the streets were, um, were um, in such, uh, such bad shape. I guess that's about all we can get out of this, Ken, other than I see in 1938 that the uh, junior section of the Board of Trade uh, was uh, uh, approved and uh, they were to give them a trial of uh, one year. Well, I can see, of course, that we've been rather hurrying through that and we've only got about a minute left, Gordon, but there are probably one or two men through those years that you might like to mention. Uh, yes, yeah, so Lauren Campbell, general manager of the West Kootenai, took a very, very great interest in the uh, Board of Trade, although he never did hold office. Now then we have one man here, William G. Turnham. He was general manager of Hunter Brothers and the Old Trail Merck. And he was president of this uh, Board of Trade here from 1914 to 1938, and that really is a record. Uh, we have, uh, there's another trail, a couple of trail men actually now. There's uh, Jesse Kemp, who's still living in trail. He was secretary uh, from 1913 to 19, 1913 to 1935. And there's Fred Peters, who's still living in trail. Uh, he was president here from 1941 to 45. And so it goes, and there are a lot of other names that I'm sure that we would like to get on, but Gordon, our time has all run out. We would again like to thank Gordon German very much for bringing us this very interesting history and our congratulations to the Rossland Chamber of Commerce on this, the observation of their 60th anniversary.